What I will be talking today is uh, this is uh, something related to agricultural fields and competition and either in, uh, between microorganisms in the soils and uh, affecting the most important food legume and most important I mean crops, uh, not only in the U.S. and the world. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to soybean, so U.S. Is most of the time is number one uh, producing soybean followed by Brazil. Some other years it uh, comes number two. But uh, we have, I mean, we. We have started this work since early 80s. And uh, we started work on this uh, legume and uh, their microsompions, we call it uh, rhizobia, and mainly on soybeans and other crops uh, from the, at least for until the 90s. Then the food safety issues came then we are focusing towards uh, food safety issues of controlling pathogenic microorganisms in mainly fresh produce and vegetables. Yeah. And these are the collaborators and some of the people that we have worked in this project since it started. And uh, someone may ask why soybean? As I said earlier, soybean is the most important food legume crop in the US. And the first or the second most agronomically important crop in the US. And uh, yes, with soybean, when we talk about legumes in general, just uh, to have an idea, uh, uh, as any other crops, it requires all kind of nutrients as we do, and uh, mostly the nitrogen and phosphorus and other things. And since we started this work, we are focusing in providing the plants with nutrients through microorganisms. Like in this case, we use uh, the microbe or the bacteria called Pridorhizobium or rhizobium that form nitrogen fixations uh, symbiotically or soybean and provide nitrogen. And in most of the cases, this amount of nitrogen is sufficient to, for, uh, for the plants during the plant's growth. Uh, sometimes this process gets disrupted uh, by other factors, whether environmental factors or soil factors, and I'll mention that uh, later on. But in general, this is the most common bacteria that form nitrogen with uh, soybeans. And this is rather azobium germanicum, or rather azobium ilconine, this one. This is highly efficient in that. And also, one of the fast growing rhizobias, Cynorhizobium fridii, sometimes rather azobium also fixes nitrogen with soybean. But this bacteria is mainly for uh, peanuts and cowpeas. And if you look here, just give an idea to justify my talks. These are, uh, we planted several uh, soybean genotypes and looked at the uh, bacterial inoculation. Uh, to the seeds when the farmers, I mean, when we planted the seeds. And you see that these two bacteria, this highly efficient, this less efficient, and you see they increase the seed protein content. As the protein content increases, the oil content, content decreases, uh, increased uh, seed yield and by this percentage, like about 10 and 17 percent with uh, I-110 ARS strains, and this is strains. Uh, this is, sounds good, but this is not always the case. There are so many factors that 
change this balance. Uh, so, uh, so this depends on what is in the soil, what bacteria are in the soil. Sometimes we, I mean, bacteria are good. Sometimes these bacteria that homologous to soybeans are not good. Why they are not good? Either because there is some uh, abiotic factors like bacteriophages, uh, sometimes the competition between the indigenous one and the bacteria that introduced to the soil through inoculations and presence of nematodes and many other factors. Yeah. So in this case, if you have a soil that highly competitive in form of what you call nodules in the roots of the soybeans, but less efficient, meaning that can form a lot of nodules, which is, these are the many factors that produce or fix this nitrogen provided to the plant. Uh, but at this case, they, do not, they lack what you call the NIF genes, which these bacteria cannot fix uh, the nitrogen. So what we have been trying for the last almost three and a half decades or so is to try to correct this situation by introducing a virus or bacteriophage more than once to change the balance. So in a soil which has high numbers or larger population of the ineffective ones, if we introduce the, vi uh, the virus or the phages that control this number of the ineffective strains in soils, at the same time, when we add the inoculum uh, bacterial strains, so uh, the bacterial strain, the introduced one, will have the chance to, fall, to form nodules in the plants. Uh, this process takes about a week or two of this, if we keep this balance. So we will be sure that plants will be inoculated with the correct or the, what you call it desirable strain as, as a result will form much better natural position with the plants here. And this will lead us to what are the main factors for uh, soybeans uh, among the, the plants itself and the genotypes and the compatibility between genotypes and the microsamprions, which is the reservoir strains. And uh, we have the brother azovia, which is in the soil. And so the soil has to be friendly with, the, with these bacteria, means uh, the bacteria, these brother azovia has to be able to form and to infect and form efficient nodules on the roots of the plants. And, uh, and uh, the rhizosphere soils, where phages and rhizobia are present, and where all this competition processes are okay here. But practically, here in the US and many parts of the world, farmers are advised to coat the soybean seeds with the bacteria, the rhizobia, and plant these coated seeds. So these coated seeds are having the uh, bacteria, which are the rhizobia, that effective to not delete the plants, and have the seeds. What we, as I will talk later, what we'll try to do later, what we have been trying to do in the last 10 years, is to look, to incorporate a lytic phage that can eliminate or limit the nodulation of the, of the soybean roots by the undesirable rhizobia threads. So we'll give the chance to the good ones to form the nodules. And uh, 
these are so far our goals. And for you, just for those who are not familiar with, these are soybean roots. This is swallowed in the roots. We call it nodules. And if you slice the nodules, you see if the, if the bacteria are efficient inside the nodules, the color will be brown, pink, or all these degree of colors. But if it's uh, white or green, so this means these bacteria that inside the nodules, uh, they lack the, the NIFI genes. So they cannot form nitrogens. So how, the, how the, uh, what approach we are using? As I said, for first of all, uh, by the way, I f forgot to mention this work has been or is being done and has been done in several locations here in the US. And we have a location in Egypt where two of my collaborators are doing this. Why, uh, why is in Egypt? Because, uh, you know, Egyptians are mostly sandy soils or calcareous soils. So the bacterial population or even the organic matter is very low. So we needed soil that has very low bacterial content. So when we add our models, and by the way, these are safe models, there are no uh, negative aspects of, of it. And because when we do this, we get the virus and the bacteria from the site itself. Yeah. So we do not introduce a Maryland soil or Pennsylvania viruses to San Diego, for example. But we have to do work here. We have to uh, isolate and characterize the bacteria, or mainly the viruses, from Sa San Diego soils. Uh, this is the, just some of the protocols we have been using to isolate the viruses from the soil at the fissure. And sometimes we are lucky and uh, we can get the virus right away. Sometimes we have to enrich, enrich, to do some enrichments for the soil to be able to isolate uh, bacteriophages. And once we isolate it, we just go through as many Barazovia strains to determine the host specificity. Because whatever viruses or bacteriophages we did, we will decide to use, or we decided to use, it has to have a wide host range. So why it have to have to wide host range? Because whatever, say, Maryland soil, for example, uh, and Virginia soil, the best rhizobia strain for these soils are what you call it UCDA 110. But if you go to the Midwest, for example, uh, uh, I mean, uh, UCD 123 strains is good as a nitrogen fixer for soybean. So that's why we have to, have to do all of these things here. In early 80s, we, so also we have to look at the survivor of the soil, at the virus or the phage in the soil. Because if you want to apply it to the soil, you want to make sure that survivor longer time at least until the plant, uh, plants uh, have good uh, infections by the, by the bacteria and form the nodules. Yeah. And then this, uh, this one of the early viruses we, we use was called bacteriophage 117 and was as a, as a isolated from uh, rhizobia called brother reception to 117. And, uh, and we have, this virus did not affect the UCD strain 110. So later on, I'll show some uh, slides showing when you mix the virus uh, that is homologous to 117, 
how this will do with the survival and the nodulation and other things. And if you do the same thing with one tin, which is resistant to the virus, also, so what will happen? Here in this case, uh, you see that when you mix the bacteria with its virus, the decline, I mean, after eight weeks, it declined sharply. And uh, it took some time for the virus to have an effect on this tree. So this do you many things, either the absorption to soil particles and many other things here. And uh, this is how this process affected to the survival of the, of the to, to the <coughs> production of the new viruses, the particles. And you see in the right here, at one C, this is this is the virus when you mix the bacteria, one seventeen bacteria with one seventeen viruses. So the increase in the uh, the the bacteriophage count, and this is in the case of uh, mixing the virus with one tin, which one tin is resistant to it, so it has uh, very little uh, effect on the virus. But when we mix these, we always look because the ultimate goal is the high, high efficient, high effective uh, bacteria. So we looked, I mean, uh, we, after we mix the viruses and the bacteria in the soil, especially the virus and with its host in the soil, and we isolated the bacteria and the virus, what's remaining in the soil. <coughs> we found most of the isolates were ineffective, which means most of the uh, surviving isolates were ineffective, means did not form good nitrogen fixation or survey. Except in this case, two isolates which were highly effective in uh, on modulating survey and fixing nitrogen. Uh, this is one of our earliest studies. studies. Uh, I mean, this work on viruses and, uh, I mean, it was started in the early 19th century. But in our case, we tried uh, the viruses in soybean when we inoculate the plants with uh, the bacteria and its virus. And when we uh, use <coughs> another bacteria which is resistant to the virus. If you look at the color in the leaf, darker green color indicates high, I mean, uh, high nitrogen fixation process occurred. What is also I mentioned that is what sometimes a process called chlorosis. This chlorosis, uh, chlorosis is caused by uh, rhizobia toxin, by toxin produced by Rhizobia, so it's not healthy to use these kind of rhizobia to the, uh, inoculate the plants. So in this case, we usually use the uh, virus to control this bacteria. This we use, I mean, uh, this use uh, alpha alpha when we mix it. This is a control. This is uh, rhizobia strain and the same rhizobia serine and with its virus, you see the difference. This is one of the early pictures we had, and this was a, a, a bacteriophage that is effective for uh, rather rhizobia and Germanicum 110. And this is the same story here. I'm running out of time. So there is, to study that because, I mean, for nodules and uh, what's inside the, the nodules, usually uh, you find one strain is predominant that found in all these nodules and some. So uh, the other strain, they may find one or two strains by a much lesser, lesser extent and with a very low percentage. So in this case, we said, what will happen if we add the virus, 
the virus, the same virus, to its own homologous strains and to a resistant strain. What will, will happen to uh, this nodule occupancy? So what happened here, we have, this is the early virus, virus 117, which is effective to bacteria 117. And we use uh, bacteria 110, which is resistant to the virus. And uh, you see this percentage of the ba these bacteria in, in, in the soil, inside the nodules. And you see, if we, this is without the phage. If you see, if you add the phage in this case, with 117 phage, you see uh, a larger increase, 71% <coughs> of bacteria inside the nodules was formed by this strain and 23 by uh, this strain. Six, only 6% six had both strains inside the nodules. What does the take me home message here? That if we add these resistant strains and, uh, and uh, susceptible strains and the virus, so all of the resistant strains will have much better chance in nodulating the soybean. <coughs> this is a similar trend or example about using different strains, uh, different soybean cultivars. And uh, this will lead us to what, ha what we have trying to accomplish. And sometimes we get it done, sometimes we, I, I really do not have a solid results. We said this has been highly successful. We found good results in the soils that contain very low bacteria. But in same Maryland soil, Virginia soil, because it's very rich in these bacteria, we, I mean, uh, the results are questionable. So what, did the, what we have been, been proposing for some time, that if we get the soybean strains right here, and the first thing we quoted, which is a normal process now in agriculture, with the resistance strain. A resistance strains to the virus that is lytic to the virulent, uh, the, to the <coughs> highly competitive strains. So this is the first layer is resistant strains of bacteria that are resistant to the virus. Then this one will have another code, but with the virus that is, uh, that is lytic to the highly competitive but undesirable strain in the soil. <coughs> Sometimes we feel, I mean, we started, we looked at the viruses, we look at the uh, nodule occupancy and the combination, but as I said, our results varied from one side of one location to another. And this is <coughs> what are suggesting, uh, what are we suggest, suggesting uh, for the biological <coughs> control system to that aimed at minimizing the nodulation by the ineffective strains but highly competitive in soil, and increase the nodulation of soybeans by the desirable high uh, efficient strains of rhizobia. And this fund, most of the funding came from this agency, and thank you.